Hello again, pre-calculus students. Um, after a lot of buildup over the last couple of days, we finally get to it. Today we're going to learn about hyperbolas. I understand some of you may not have encountered hyperbolas before. Not to worry, they're just another curve, just some more fun algebra. So let's jump right into hyperbolas and um, I don't know, I keep saying it, but let's get this party started. So I'll share my screen with you and you can download this handout as well. <clears throat> In an ellipse, we said the sum of the two uh, focal radii was a constant. In hyperbola, we're taking the distance, I'm sorry, the difference between them. So we're subtracting the two um, focal lengths. And since we don't want the um, distance to be negative, we're going to take the absolute value. So in this picture here, um, this rectangle and these x's, these diagonals, these are not part of the hyperbola. <coughs> we just draw these to help us draw the hyperbola. The hyperbola is this curve here and this curve and this curve here. And remember how I've said that conic sections always, 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 let me um, make that a little bit bigger. Now conic sections always, always, always curve around their focal points. Well, here we go again. Here's the focus. Here's the focus. And you can see the conic is curving around this focus here and curving around this focus here. So what we'll do to get the hyperbolas, we'll say, this distance minus this distance, and at least the absolute value of it, is a constant. And it's the same constant as this distance minus this distance. Again, absolute value. So the algebraic equation for a hyperbola that opens with an axis um, parallel to the x-axis is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one. Here is your minus sign. And you can see down here for the um, focal length, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. <coughs> so as I've said before, there is always one pair or one negative sign in each pair of equations for the ellipse and the hyperbola. In the ellipse, the positive was here and the negative was here, but now we're in a hyperbola. <clears throat> so unlike an ellipse, a squared is not the bigger number. A squared just tells us how long the transverse axis is. Trans means across, verse for vertex. So if we're going from vertex to vertex, that distance is 2a. The distance from the center to a vertex is A. Um, B can be bigger. In fact, you can tell in this picture, B is bigger. And so what we do to draw this hyperbola is I say, all right, I need a box that goes A units from left and right of the center. And I need a, um, B units up and down from the center. <coughs> And I draw that rectangle. Then I draw its um, diagonals. And it turns out that the diagonal, the slope of these diagonals is plus or minus B over A if your hyperbola is oriented left, right, like this. If your hyperbola is oriented up, down, Go a little more. Then it's y squared first. So in other words, a squared is always the number under the first variable in a hyperbola. It doesn't matter if it's the bigger or the smaller number. It's just the number under the first variable. <coughs> so in this case, I need to go a units up and down from the center. I need to go B units left and right because B is under the X or B squared is under the X squared. So I go B units left and right, draw the box, draw the diagonals. 
Now, how do you know whether to put the, um, the hyperbola up here or out here? And of course, it will always touch right here. I mean, well, it always touches the box at, um, at one of these points. And if your hyperbola was over here, it would touch the box right there, and then it would be asymptotic. So these two lines are asymptotes. And you might recall that the degenerate form of a hyperbola is two intersecting lines. And here they are, it's their asymptotes. This time you'll notice though that the slope of the asymptotes is A over B. You know, A units in the Y direction, B units in the X direction. So this one has a slope of positive A over B. This one has a slope of negative A over B. Um, I'm gonna show you in a moment. First, how do we get these asymptotes? How do we know that those asymptotes um, <coughs> have these slopes? And second, how you can remember easily which um, slope is for which uh, hype type of hyperbola? How, do you, how you can remember that if your hyperbola opens up down, the slopes are plus or minus A over B, and if the hyperbola opens left, right, the slopes of the asymptotes are B over A. Not my first rodeo, so I'm gonna get you through this. So first off, let's just kinda sorta derive, we're not gonna derive, I'm gonna give you an explanation for the asymptotes <coughs> and where they come from. So here's a, just a generic hyperbola. It's centered at zero, zero, because it's x minus zero and y minus zero. Um, it's centered at zero, zero, and it opens left, right, because x squared over a squared is first. Now, as x approaches infinity, our hyperbola should be approaching some line y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> so let's solve this equation for y. So let's see if I move y squared over b squared over here and the one over here, I'm left with this equation. Multiply both sides by b squared and then take the square root of both sides. Now keep in mind that you know, there's going to be, since this is y squared, there are going to be two values. It's going to be plus and minus here. But take a look. b squared is a constant. And we're letting x go to infinity. So as x gets bigger, 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 eventually, <clears throat> I'm not saying that b squared equals zero. I'm saying that this number is going to be so humongous when you take you know, eight zillion for x and square it. What do you get when you square eight zillion? You get 64 bazillion. I mean, that's a lot of zillions. <clears throat> so the, this constant that we're gonna subtract is, a, is gonna be such a minuscule, tiny figure that we can say it approaches zero. So you can see that when we take the square root of this, we get plus or minus b over a times x. So here is why when a parabola opens left, right, when it's x squared first, the asymptote is b over a. If you did the other hyperbola where it was y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals one, did this same algebra, you would get a slope of plus or minus a over b. So now I uh, promised you that I'd show you a little way to make it easy to remember which one's which. How do you remember which hyperbola has which slope? So in this hyperbola, our slopes are plus or minus b over a. In this hyperbola, our slopes are plus or minus a over b. Remember that um, slope was defined for you back in probably some pre-algebra class as change in y over change in x, or rise over run, y over x. So 
b over a, you'll notice that it's the number under the y, well, the square root of the number under the y. But the b term is under the y term, and the a term is under the x term. So you can think of y over x, b over a. Similarly, y over x, a over b. Now, don't be confused and put, make these slopes a squared over b squared and b squared over a squared. You do have to take the square roots of these numbers, but it's still y over x, a over b. So here's how you graph a hyperbola. <clears throat> here's a, a simple one. And they, we, they will get harder. We have a, a second lesson on hyperbolas coming up. So x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. It's x minus 0, y minus 0. So there's our center. I go two units left, right in the x direction. I go three units, because that's b squared. One, two, three units up, down in the y direction. And then I make that box that goes two units out, and three units up in each direction. Draw the asymptotes. Now, what is the slope of this uh, asymptote? Well, it's one, two, three up and two right, um, plus or minus three halves, y over x, three halves. Oh, amazing. What's the slope of this asymptote? Well, it's down three, right two, or negative three halves. <clears throat> Alrighty, so we've got the asymptotes. The whole reason for drawing the box was just to get these asymptotes. Now I just make, I got a, I know that X comes first, so it's gonna open left, right. And what else? Oh, I know my graph needs to kiss the box here and here. And we can prove that. Substitute two, zero in here. Well, you'd get 4 over 4 minus 0 is 1. Put in negative 2, 0. You'd get 4 over 4 minus 0 equals 1. So we know that the, these points, it kisses the box. Um, those points are on the hyperbola. And then it's the, um, you got to be, since these are asymptotes, your curve needs to be asymptotic. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to these asymptotes without touching. Again, think of it like a school dance. The curve can get as close as it wants to those asymptotes, but no touching. Now, where's the, uh, the um, focal points on this hyperbola? Well, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Four plus nine is 13, so c is root 13 which is um, uh, three point something. So here's one, two, three point something. And you go put them over here because you know that it's got to be in, the curve has to go around the asymptotes. I'm sorry, around the focal points. So you wouldn't put your focal points up here. Besides so X comes first, tells you to go in the X direction from the center to put your focal points. Your focal points will always, always, always be on what's called the transverse axis. It's the axis that goes from this vertex through the center over to this vertex. Oh, I already did the work. See, it's square root of 13 is approximately 3.6. So one, two, 3.6. That's how we graph a hyperbola. Now again, the only part, the only thing I've graphed here that is the hyperbola really is this curve and this curve. The asymptotes, we want to see those asymptotes when you graph them so that we know that you know that the curve is not being like a parabola. It's not getting, uh, it's not pulling away over here and getting quote unquote steeper. Um, it is approaching those asymptotes. So even though we want you to graph those, they are not part of the hyperbola. Now, just for giggles, let's uh, <clears throat> take a look at this. What would the equation be for the hyperbola? Use the same box, but opened up here.
I want you to think about that. And if I remember, we'll get to that in the next video. If not, you should still be able to answer it. That's all I've got. Have a great day.